Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, today we can see learning Python and today we'll talk about event-driven applications and how we can use event systems in order to remove dependencies from our code. So let's start. Well, dependencies are really important and if you have tons of them, then it's going to be really hard for you to write any new features or remove bugs from your code because your code is just going to be unsustainable. So we want to remove dependencies as much as possible. And uh, there are tons of ways of doing that. There are different methods of doing that for different cases, but one of them is using event systems or event-driven applications as uh, their real name suggests. So what is that? Imagine that we have a function, something like create user. It can be any function, but typically it's going to be your service function. So your function that um, has the business logic itself. So create user, username, but once again, it can be, it can be any function. So username and the password as a string. And that function just gonna create our user. So user from username, from password, and something like dot save. That's it. So very, very simple function. However, let me just comment it out. And for now, instead of just writing user save, all that stuff, I just can print um, saved or user was saved, something like that. And let's print the username and password here. So it's just gonna be like, um, yeah, it's just gonna be like a function that saves our user. I just drop print not to include any other libraries, just to keep, keep it all simple. So we have username, let me write Andre, and here we can write something like that as a password. So let's run it, and as you can see, user was saved. So instead of print, you can imagine any logic. It's not only about user saving, it's about anything. So any type of logic. And typically, what you need to do is um, call some other functions. So when you have, when we execute, for example, create user, we may wanna notify our friends that that user has created his account. So you know that in Instagram or Facebook, you have uh, notifications that show you that your friend created a, a account, an account. Your friend has a new account here. Your friend has a new account here. And uh, we may wanna send that notification as well. So what we can do is have a new function somewhere in our project. I'm gonna create a new file called functions. And that function is gonna be notify friends. It's gonna accept username and just print friends were notified. So once again, instead of prints, we can use uh, any logic and let's print username as well. Instead of prints, we can use any logic. So it can be an email system so we can send emails to our friends. We can just notify them in our apps. We can do whatever we want. However, I'm just gonna use notify friend functions here and use print inside of all of my methods today. So notify friends, let's import it. We import it from functions and uh, here we just pass username as an argument. Now we can see that user was saved and then our friends were notified. Very, very simple. And typically you do that. So you will just call the function that you need. However, what if we have send email function as well? So send email to the user, username. For example, that send email function can say, you successfully registered your account. Now you can access all of our resources or something like that. Let's create that function as well. So I can just show you event-driven applications on many functions at once. So print email sent and our username, just like that. So now we can see that user was saved, email was sent, and friends were notified. So we save our user, we send an email saying that you registered your account, everything is great, and our friends see that a new account appeared in our system. Very, very simple application. However, what is the problem here? The problem is that sometimes we don't want to expose dependencies directly like that because those are dependencies. Send email and notify friends are dependencies. Why is that? Because first of all, we import them from our functions and uh, it's gonna be really hard for us to change them if we need to. So it's, it can seem very, very easy. So just, just change send email and notify friends, nothing to worry about. However, what we, if we need to quickly add new functions, remove new functions or change the functions that we are calling? That's one thing. Another thing is what if we don't know how, we don't know the definition of the function, so we don't know what arguments should we pass in here. That's another thing. So definition of the function, all the arguments, and we need to quickly change functions, remove functions, update functions, and create functions, all that stuff. So 
We can use um, some things like dependency injections in Python, or we can use event. Well, those are different things, but we can use them in that case. But today we'll talk about event-driven applications. So we're going to use our own event system. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new file called events systems. And here I'm going to create um, events as a dictionary. So just a dictionary, global dictionary. Then let's create a function called register, register event. And it's going to accept two things. First of all, event as a string, and then function as callable. Just like that. So event as a string, function as callable. And what we're going to do here, basically, events dictionary is going to contain our event, for example, user registered, user registered and then a list of functions that we need to call. So function one, function two, function three, function four. That is pretty simple. One thing that I want to talk about is that you always should name your events in past tense. That's kind of just like a rule because your events indicate that something happened. User was registered. I know order was delivered or something like that. So register event, what, what we're going to do here. First of all, we're going to check if our events events.get from event, so our handlers, so all the functions that uh, handle our event, our events are called handlers. If our events.get has that event um, in it, then it's going to return a list of functions. If it does not, it's going to return none. So if handlers is none, what we're supposed to do, so we don't have any handlers right now, it's those are none. We're supposed to do something like that, events from event equal to a list of function. So what I'm saying, a list of function, just have a list and put a function link inside of it. Very, very simple. However, if we have some events, so if our handlers are not, um, if our handlers are not uh, none, so we have some events, then that means that our handlers is a list of functions. What we can do here is just say handlers append from function. So once again, we register our event here. We get an event and, and we're saying, if we have that event in our events dictionary, then if we have that event, we just append a function to the list of all the handlers. If we don't have that event, if the event is none, we just create a new list with a function inside of it. That's it. All right, then let's go here and let's create another function called dispatch. Because the first function, register event, is just gonna be like a function that register, well, it's obvious, it's gonna register your events. We are not gonna call it in, in all of our code. We're just gonna call it in some bootstrap script, somewhere where we start our application, and that's it. But dispatch function is the function that we're gonna call all the time. Because dispatch function accepts two things. Event that we're gonna call, and data that we need to pass to that event. To be to be honest, what you can do is use quarks and arcs, so cute arguments in Python, or just arguments in Python that um, are infinite. But uh, I don't really see the, the need for using them right now. And the problem with quarks and arcs is that they don't, um, they kind of don't show you the whole signature of a function. So if you're using quarks and arcs, you've got to be really, really careful, because I had tons of projects where just by using arcs and quarks, it became unusable. So the projects became unusable, unreadable, just because I didn't know what to pass in my functions. So be really careful with that, but I'm just gonna pass data. And what we're doing in dispatch? In dispatch, we're saying basically the same thing. Handlers, handlers equals events dot get from event. Because we need to check that that event exists. If event is none, then we raise value error that says event was not found. And let's put a name of our event in here. So event event was not found. However, if our event is not none, that means that our event is a list of functions. And what we can say here is for handler in handlers, handler from data. That's it. So what we are basically doing, we are saying that in register event, you need to add that function that we put as the second argument in the list of handlers. And in dispatch, we go through each handler 
and code with the data that we passed to our dispatch. That's it. So why is that beneficial for us? So let's go to our main.py. Once again, as I said, create user is probably going to be in some services.py file. So it's yeah, it's a services.py file. I had tons of videos on what are services, how to use them, and so on. So services.py file. And um, what we are going to do here is first of all register an event. Register event, just like that. We're going to call an event for user registered. And function is going to be send email. We're just going to pass, as you can say, I just pass um, the function as uh, a link. I do not call it, I just use it as an object. Then notify friends is going to be registered as well. So register event, user registered, notify friends. Just like that. So we have registered two events, send email and notify friends. Once again, that is probably going to be in main.py or bootstrap.py, somewhere, somewhere there. So register events are not going to be in directly in the file where you create your function because that's just useless. Register events are probably, probably, once again, you can use them directly with the functions. Yeah, you can use them directly with the functions. It depends on your project, but typically they are going to be somewhere in a bootstrap script or in a main script. And what we're doing here is we're saying register an event for user registered event that um, register a handler. Yeah, let's rename a function because we want to register handler. Or actually, yeah, let's, let's just leave it as a register event. So we are registering a handler for that user registered event. It's going to send an email and um, basically that's it. Register event for user register as well as sending an email is going to notify our friends that uh, the user was created. And why does it help? So because we, if we look at our project like that, we don't see anything in create user. We don't see that from functions import. The only thing that we're going to see here is dispatch. Dispatch. Because, because if we're going to go here, we're going to pass event as user registered and data as a username. Let's run it. As you can see, user was saved, email was sent, friends were notified. Why is that? Because I dispatch my event and those handlers send email and notify friends. They act as uh, as the function that we call in dispatch fun in dispatch function, and uh, because of that, we we call functions without directly using them in our create user, and we removed that dependency from our project. So as you can see, it's really really simple. We just dispatch a function, register them beforehand, and uh, call them without directly using them as uh, objects in our in our create user or in any other function. Very, very simple. And that is called event-driven architecture. So if you have uh, all of your commands, all of your, well, not commands, but if you have every part of your project using events, that is called event-driven architecture. And uh, that's just an example. So instead of calling send email and um, notify friends directly, we just dispatch an event that triggers some some handlers somewhere around the path. And we don't know that handlers. That is really, really important. The only problem with uh, event-driven um, event architecture and, uh, well, not the only, but the main problem with event-driven architecture is that you can see all of the handlers that you have for your create user. And maybe there are none. So maybe it's just like a dispatch function that user registered from username and, all right, we don't need to do anything aside from that. but. Typically, that's the biggest problem because you can't see the whole state of your application, what functions are going to be called, when they're going to be called, and how, in what order. So it's going to be the only problem for you, probably, that um, is going to come with that uh, event system application. Of course, in real-world applications, there are tons of others, like how to use what, uh, yeah, what technology to pick, what um, module to pick, because you're, not, you're probably not going to write that... Uh, event system yourself. So there are tons of problems, but the biggest one in all of the systems is that you can see the whole state of your application if you just look at your function, if you just look at your method, at your service. Because you don't know what happens to those events. But the biggest plus of that application type is that you can omit dependencies at all. So you don't have any dependencies. And if you worked with microservices, then you probably know that event-driven applications or architecture is really big in microservices. Why is that? Because if you have two services, like 
users and notifications. If you want um, to say that when your user is registered, you want to send a notification and for some reason you have notification service. What you can do is either use, so register a user on your user services or your user service and then call some function from the notification services. And uh, that can be great, but the only one problem that um, you need to know about the state of not notification services, you need to know how to use it, you need to know the definition of the API of notification services. So if your user directly calls notification services, then you know you need to know how to call the API, how to use that API and all that stuff. If you send events, then the user just says, all right, so user was registered. Your notifications service can listen to those events and um, somehow respond to the things that happened in your system. So that is one simple application that shows you how to use event-driven architecture. Thank you for watching. My name is Andrew. Subscribe to my channel, leave a like, leave a comment. If you have any questions, you can ask them down in the comments. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.